Minister, the horse and greyhound industries are an enviable and invaluable component to the economic, cultural, social and traditional fabric of Irish life. They have served to deliver prestige to Ireland. They are recognised brand ambassadors in developing Irish tourism abroad. They have created economic ties and have allowed Irish people to forge international links that have served us through good times and through bad. Through generations, passionate, committed animal lovers and sports enthusiasts in horse and greyhound industries have developed in Ireland through years of selective trade theory, international centres of excellence which have become known and around throughout the world. State funding directed through Horse Racing Ireland and Greyhound Racing Ireland is designed to support these industry sectors and to provide for continued sector development. The benefits of this can be seen in a 2017 Deloitte report demonstrating that total direct and stimulated expenditure within the horse breeding and racing industry is estimated at £1.84 billion 2016. This revenue supports over 15,000 jobs involved in racing, breeding and related industries. Horse racing in particular generates significant returns to the rural economy. Many farmers are also brood mare owners. If you come to my county of Waterford, I can happily introduce you to the farrier, the vet, the fence builder, the tillage farmer, the tractor mechanic, the stable lads and ladies, the jockeys who depend hugely on this industry for their occupation and many for their sole income. The greyhound industry too provides considerable economic benefits along with direct and indirect employment. A 2016 survey reported over 5,000 full-time and part-time jobs in the sector, with over 7,300 active greyhound owners in Ireland. Greyhound ownership and racing, although most active in the rural heartlands of Ireland, has also urban-based breeders and supporters, and I'm sure most people in this House at some time in their lives have enjoyed a night at the dogs. Both industries have been concentrated on furthering activities to improve and maintain the highest levels of animal welfare and care. There are always some people for whom profit is the only objective, even to the detriment of animal welfare. But in greyhound racing, where this can be a more significant problem due to the lower cost of ownership, the sector is fighting back. Provisions in the new Greyhound Racing Act 2019 seek to improve standards in traceability, transportation, to provide financial support for injured animals, as well as promoting a new scheme to look at rehoming greyhounds after their racing career has finished. The sector has been tasked with providing demonstrable change with respect to animal welfare and has appointed a new director of greyhound care and welfare to oversee these industry improvements. New technologies also are creating new audiences for Irish horse racing and greyhound racing. Some parts of Asia have discovered Irish greyhound racing by satellite TV following the success of Irish horse racing in developing a global following. This increased interest is delivering direct income to Ireland through online betting tax receipts to the Irish Exchequer. This is in turn supporting the prerogative of developing regional economic diversification of Ireland through beneficial income, enterprise and tax measures. The financial supports that are being announced to support these industries are entirely appropriate in my opinion, given the decimation of income and gate receipts, receipts due to the ravages of COVID-19. These industries provide long-term income into the state and the government will in turn be a long-term beneficiary, recovering increased tax-related revenue for these sectors in the future. The cultural implications too regarding supporting these sectors must be kept front of mind. Ireland is a world leader in these industry sectors and as well as world-class standards in terms of animal welfare and husbandry, we must also consider the welfare of the people who depend on these industries for their livelihoods as well as their amenity value. Too often in this country we speak about the cost of everything. We fail to recognise the value of anything at times. The global leading position these industries have developed for this country must be maintained and supported so that once COVID-19 has been consigned to the past, these industries may again flourish and contribute to the advancement of rural and regional Ireland.